Hello everybody, Simon Whiteley here. This is just a quick video to share some of the work that I've been doing using the stamp-based assessment methods, looking at a case study of a towed target colliding with the towing aircraft. You'll have probably seen a couple of posts on social media. This is a follow-up to that really, just to give people a, a bit of an insight to some of the work that I've been doing and the, the real value that the stamp-based method, particularly the hierarchical control structure, can provide anybody, whether that's an incident or accident investigator, whether it's an operator or a system designer and manufacturer. Okay, so just a quick event description then. So the event occurred in a danger area over the English Channel, approximately 20 nautical miles south of Portland Bill in the UK. It was on a Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, the 25th of April 2015, and it was during a target towing operation, and at the end of the target towing mission, the aircrew were recovering the target back on board the aircraft using the, using the winch. Now, the ultimate outcome of this incident was that the towing aircraft and the winch carrier suffered damage. The tow target was detached and lost at sea. Fortunately, there was no injuries or deaths. These are the aircraft, the systems that were involved. So on the left, We've got the target towing aircraft, a Dassault Falcon 20D. Now the picture isn't of the actual aircraft that was involved, but one very, very similar. And then on the right hand side is the Megit Defence Systems winch and the tow target mounted below the wing on a pylon. As part of this short case study, I've used a single source of information and that was a UK Air Accidents Investigation Branch Field Investigation Summary, which is only about 10 pages long and it's available at those links. I'll put the links in the description as well. So first, what are the event specific outcomes that occurred and what was there a potential to have occurred? What was the potential outcomes? So the actual outcomes on this occasion was that the towed target collided with the towing aircraft and this caused damage not only to the towing aircraft wing, but also to the winch carrier. The tow target itself was lost at sea, and there was obviously some type of mission disruption or mission failure. Now there was potential for death or injury if the aircraft had been brought down, or if the tow target had fallen on somebody you know, underneath the flight path. There was potential for significant damage or destruction of the aircraft or property, um, and also you know, depending on the circumstances, there could have been aggravating or special circumstances, you know, for example, environmental conditions, weather conditions, whether the aircraft had an emergency either before or during this situation, or whether they were overflying other people, for example. So what are the hazards associated with this particular event? What are the hazardous behaviours, states or events that we're interested in? Well, I've identified three, the main one being hazard one, which is Tow target movement that leads to collision with the towing aircraft. And I've highlighted movement because I'm talking generally in terms of, you know, target stability, so whether it moves around in the weather conditions, but also the winching situation, so when the tow target's either been winched in or deployed. And then hazard two, so this is an obvious one. So this is detachment of the target from the towing aircraft. So detachment, I've included both intended, uh, whereby the crew may decide to cut, cut the uh, target, cut the cable so it detaches, or it may be unintended. And obviously there's some context associated with that. You know, for example, whether the aircraft is flying over populated areas or whether it's within danger area boundaries. So the hazard will be less or more significant depending on that context. And then hazard three. So conflicting trajectories that lead to a loss of safe separation margin between weapons, targets, aircraft, other equipment or people. So this is a, a higher level hazard that involves the operation of the aircraft and the mission involved in towing targets. So what are the high level safety constraints associated with these three hazards? So high level safety constraint 01 essentially requires that the hierarchical control structure, the HCS, shall control tow target movement such that collisions with towing aircraft are avoided. High level safety constraint 02, the hierarchical control structure shall control the detachment of the target from the towing aircraft. And finally, high level safety constraint 03, 
the HCS shall prevent conflicting trajectories that lead to a loss of safe separation margin between weapons, targets, aircraft, other equipment or people. Now it's important to point out, you know, where appropriate and necessary, you could decompose those high level safety constraints into specific safety constraints for the relevant controllers within the control structure. This is the hierarchical control structure that I've created from the information contained within the Accident Investigation Board report. So across the, uh, across the bottom, you can see there the control process, the physical process, which in this case is the trajectory, not only of the aircraft, but of the towed target. The aircraft is obviously under the control of the pilots, which is under the control of the military air traffic controller. And then the towed target itself, it's attached to the aircraft through the cable, to the cable spool. The cable spool winds in and out uh, under the control of a turbine. And that turbine, the movement of the turbine, is uh, controlled by airflow, which is controlled by some servo-activated vent doors. Now, those vent doors are controlled by a turbine speed control system, which is interacted with by the target tow officer on board the aircraft, one of the crew, through a winch control panel that also provides visual feedback to the target tow operator so that they know things like how much cable there is, how fast it's moving in and the acceleration of that cable as it moves in and winds out. Now the air crew and the target tow officer, they co communicate through the crew intercom um, and then obviously they've got certain procedures and checklists that they use not only to operate the aircraft to complete the mission but also to operate the winch itself. You'll notice that the target tow officer is sort of key to this control structure. Now obviously the winch itself has a turbine speed control system, but the position that this target tow officer has in the hierarchy of the structure, you'll notice that there are a lot of feedback going to that tow officer. That tow officer has to you know, keep an eye on a lot of different things and make decisions which are time critical as well as safety related. So there are three basic causes that I've lifted from the Air Accident Investigation Branch report. So the target winch accelerated rapidly at 40 meter cable length. It's probable that winch turbine overspeed was due to the vent doors being prevented from closing when commanded. And this was associated with a fault with the vent door closed limit switch. So this is just zooming in on the technical aspects of the winch itself. So you can see there the turbine speed control system receives feedback from the limit switches, in this case the closed switches, and then it decides how much it needs to open or close the vent doors to control the airflow, to control the speed of the turbine winding the cable spool in. So in the aftermath of the incident, the target system winch manufacturer made some changes and recommendations, and these were to replace the cable harnesses every 10 years, to do some ground tests every 20 missions, um, but also to change the procedures for the TTO to check the cable length HMI human machine interface display for changes in the units from tens, tens of meters to units per second. Now that essentially affects these three parts of the control structure. So there's the technical aspect of changing the cables, there's the changes to procedures, uh, the target tow officer keeping an eye on the cable parameters, changes to the operations manual, and then the maintenance instructions. So that's the, they're the initial changes that the, the manufacturer recommended. Now these are the operator changes, the recommendations that the operator put forward. So they wanted to enhance the vent door movement visual cues, so they painted some extra markings on there to make it easier to see. They made some changes to procedures, so uh, it requires the pilot monitoring to visually monitor the active winch vent doors for correct movement. So that's effectively doubling up on what the uh, target tow officer does. And then another procedure change, but this time for the TTO. So that's to select the slow setting uh, on the control panel with more than double the length of cable remaining as previously. So that gives them more time to keep an eye on what the cable is doing and what the, how the uh, target is behaving. Uh, vent door limit switch recurrent testing every four hours of winch running, so that reduces the dormancy of issues. And then the vent door limit switch replace, replacement program. 
So that effectively affects these parts of the control structure. Uh, so changes to the maintenance instructions, operations manual, uh, changing the checklists and the standard procedures, but also it introduces this new feedback loop from the uh, vent doors through to the aircrew or one of the pilots, depending on which side of the aircraft, which winch they're using. So all that's done really is give people more feedback. It hasn't really changed the possibility that this outcome could occur again. So the main safety recommendation that was made that came out of the report was that the European Aviation Safety Agency require the manufacturer to review the design, maintenance and operation of the winch and similar winches to reduce the possibility of an uncommanded target acceleration during recovery. So that's a good recommendation. Now there's a few key findings then. So <clears throat> the interactions between and behavior of the target tow officer and the turbine speed control system are not really dealt with by the recommendations um, in, in the detail that they really should. So there are things, that, there are aspects associated with the TTO, such as feedback limitations, control loop timing implications, and control ability. So personally, I recommend further investigation is done on behalf of the operator and the winch manufacturer. And it should focus on these, th on these three aspects. So the green arrows I've highlighted, these are the controllability of the target tow officer, the turbine speed control system, and then the red arrows, they highlight the feedback from the control process, so the cable spool, up through the various sensors to the turbine speed control system, and then back to the target tow officer. Now, in principle, the turbine speed control system has more direct control over the speed of the turbine than the target tow officer does. And they're effectively sat further back away from the process. And so they are subject to delays in feedback and delays in being able to apply a control action. So even if the target tow officer was able to detect that there was an overspeed, there isn't really much time for the target tow officer to actually do anything about it. So a controller closer to that process really should take priority. So really what I'm saying is that looking at the control structure, it's clear to me that the, the design of the winch and the way that the operator is involved is not sufficient to prevent this accident happening again. And next time it could be more severe. And so what I'm saying is this control structure to eliminate this, uh, this outcome or manage it more appropriately needs to change. There needs to be more priority in terms of local real-time or close to real-time control over the movement of the uh, vented servo-activated vent doors. So final thought. So we've talked about controllability and human factors. Um, you'll notice from the diagram that the target tow officer has lots and lots of feedback about what's going on, but it's all potentially out of sequence. So for example, the video uh, console, the, the console video display, the TTO has a video source selector and you can only see one video whether it's a relatively close-up view of the left-hand wing or whether it's a larger broader view provided by the right wing camera. Now that it's not possible for the target tow officer to be able to see all of those things and act quickly enough to prevent this outcome occurring again. So as I said the, high, the high, hierarchical control structure is inadequate regardless of the fulfilling the recommendations that have been made. And in this particular scenario, strictly only one failure occurred. The target tow officer did not fail. Um, you know, there are significant systemic and systematic contributions as highlighted by the HCS that I've shown you. So there's lots of other potential causal scenarios for this outcome. And whilst these recommendations are, you know, you know there needs to be recommendations, the ones that have been recommended are, are limited in their ability to prevent this outcome from occurring again. More significant structural change needs to happen to be able to prevent this outcome occurring again. I hope you liked the video. If you've got any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them, so please put them in the comments box below. Please also like, share and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.